Lead generation as a real estate agent gets way too complicated. There's simply just too many options, too many trainings, too many things to, to look at. So my goal in this video is to show you really just the seven different buckets and you can pick one or two of them to master in the next 30 days from watching this video. By the way, my name's Chad Leenberg and I've helped hundreds of agents hit six figures in real estate using our Shark Partner Program. If you're interested, feel free to hit me up at the contact info below. All right, so the first one is open houses. Now, sure, open houses, uh, you've heard of this one before, but what you haven't heard of is the math. And I think that's what I wanna make clear to you. And to be able to accept a few numbers or equations to be able to understand what I'm saying. So here's the deal. Let's assume I know you may, if you are a new agent watching this, you don't have these numbers yet, but I'll tell you from my experience, one out of 20 people who walk into an open house, you can convert to buy a house with you. Let's assume that math. Now in my experience on average in an open house, you'll have about five people per open house. So some you might have 20, some you might have one. So if one out of 20 will buy with you and five people come in the open house, you need to do four open houses to get a sale. So if you'd want to sell 50 homes in a year, you'd need to do about 200 plus open houses. And that's four a week. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's one thing to do open houses on a Sunday, but if you only do one open house on Sunday, every Sunday for 52 weeks, needing four open houses to get a sale, you're only going to get about 13 sales through the year. And that's pending if you stay consistent with it. If you get one out of 20, if you actually follow up with the leads and do the prospecting activities from the names and numbers you get at the people that sign in, assuming you do have a sign in sheet. So that's what open houses looks like. And I think that a lot of agents, this would be a great way to do it. You can find somebody in your local office or uh, you have to, it does have to be in your brokerage, but you could find somebody or another bonus extra credit because you can kind of do another one is find a for sale by owner to host an open house for them. And, you know, in return for getting the buyers, you'll host an open house for the for sale by owner. It might be a way for you to eventually get the listing as well. Now let's move on to door knocking. Uh, not my area of expertise, but 100% can work. This is the thing. Everything works. They all work. You pick a lead generation method and there's somebody out there that's probably making 500K or a million a year doing exactly this. And I know there are door knockers out there that do it. Now, the keys here is you wanna find a pitch that makes sense and you wanna make it not too salesy. You need to be relatable. Uh, but that said, if you commit to this consistently, you're going to find success just like anything else. And there is kind of a line that it's hard to hate up close. And I think that's what does work with door knocking. Although you'll get plenty of people that are agitated with solicitors. I know I personally hate it and that's probably why I won't do it. It's still, it's a numbers game and it will work because people, some people do have a hard time hating up close. So. If you can be real human and not wear the mask, I'm sure you'll find some success doing it. Again, not something I'm overly experienced with, but I know plenty of agents that make it work. Now let's talk about cold calling. Cold calling maybe for sale by owners or expires or circle prospecting a neighborhood. In my experience, you need 10 conversations a day and about 75 dials a day to get those 10 conversations. How good you are depends on how often you do it. I know an agent who, when he started, was about one out of every 50 to 60 calls he would get the listing, and now that he's in his rhythm, will convert one out of every seven. So it's something that you def, just like anything else that I'll mention on this video, you'll get better at over time. You also need to find your unique selling propositions. When you're calling for sale by owners and expires, a lot of agents buy the same data. So they probably be getting 15 other phone calls from other agents. How are you gonna stand out? One easy way to do that is not give up because most agents give up after the first call. Also having a unique selling proposition with it, like a unique listing program is gonna help you stand out uh, as well if you get your messaging right. Internet leads. This is one of my absolute favorite because I don't know, maybe because I'm a tech and a data nerd. Uh, so internet leads can be Facebook ads, Google pay-per-click ads. You can buy them later in the funnel from sites like Zillow or Realtor.com or uh, Homes.com, different sites. And um, they just simply got Google or Facebook ads to their site and nurtured them a little longer uh, than you would. So that's, you know, they're just a little later in the funnel. But either way, it's people who are looking at homes online. Some are clicking things. Some are just browsing, some are actually asking info on a property. This is a numbers game and a long-term game. If you're getting them earlier on the funnel on a Facebook or Google ad, it's going to take a lot longer of a follow-up strategy. You need to call them and say, you know, hey, are you looking at homes? I just want to make sure that I'm sending you relevant homes if you are. You know, just be of value to them. 
don't go away. Put them in a weekly email where you're hitting all of your leads in your database. You really have to have a good nurtured game. Uh, and then you can capture the low-hanging fruits that come in on this as well. If you do work it right, you can get a 3% conversion rate, meaning one out of every 30 you can convert. If you don't work it right, but you do stay consistent with the follow-up, definitely should expect a 1% conversion rate off of the leads that you work. All right, now let's talk about content marketing. What I'm doing here. <laughs> So there's a lot of buckets you can place it in with content marketing, uh, whether it's YouTube or you do shorts on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or you name it. Uh, you can do things like websites and SEO, it's, you know, content that people are interested in that provide value that make them want to talk with you about their decision. You know, whether it's a video, blog post, Facebook post, you name it. It's the content out there that attracts your ideal client. In this, you have to be strategic. You have to, you also have to understand you have to provide a lot of value. You have to make deposits before you will be able to make withdrawal. But one nice thing about content marketing is people come pre-sold. If you deliver value to them over time, they'll know you as the go-to person in that space and they'll come to you, you'll be top of mind. So it's a longer game. You won't really see results for probably a good six months, give or take. There's always outliers, uh, but it's something that you need to commit to long-term. and something I would suggest to kind of sprinkle in with something else you're doing so that you can wait a long time to be able to see the results. So your sphere of influence, this is one of the best places to go as a new agent. Find a way to talk with the human beings that you know, let them know that you're a real estate agent. Don't be a secret agent. Stay in close contact with, with them. If anybody ever tries to refer you, they are a champion. Yes, you, you, you send up a signal flare. You keep in touch with them. You definitely always stay around them. You want to find your referral champions that kind of like almost like your affiliates in a way. Uh, those are those are the ones you got to love on and take care of. But your sphere of influence, throwing client parties, making sure they're on a newsletter, making sure you provide value to them. You can use the content marketing in conjunction with the sphere of influence. But in my experience, you can find around a 7% conversion rate based on people you would talk to that you would not have otherwise have spoke to in the last 30 to 60 days. So it's, it's a lot higher because they know you and that they know, like, and trust you. So there's a little bit of a guard down with the sphere of influence route. So uh, everyone's sphere is different and everyone's sphere has limits. At some point you'll have to extend that sphere. It might only get you 10, 20, 30, 40 sales a year. And if it does and it caps out, you might need to find a way to extend it through networking further in your sphere or adding something like internet leads, cold calling, etc. Networking, business to business networking. It 100% works. I know an agent who moved to a market that now sells 80 homes a year in a market that she was never from, from business to business networking once a week, presenting their bit, you know, everybody taking turns presenting their business. It all comes back to conversations with human beings, just like all of these. Uh, but if you find a way to provide value for their clients, they will provide a way to pro provide value for you. So this is one way that you can definitely leverage a, a mutually beneficial business relationship um, and just meeting other human beings that know what you do that will be able to recommend you to their human beings that they work with. Those are the seven ways that you can really, obviously there's difference that, you know, there's certain sub buckets and there might be some other ones that I haven't been mentioned here, but in my experience, those are the seven main buckets you can kind of choose from. My personal favorite is internet leads. It's just what I like to do. It's what worked the best for me. When I started, I tried internet leads and for sale by owners uh, and expireds. As I gone, as I had gone on, I eventually gave up for sale by owners and expireds and did internet leads and sphere of influence. It worked great for me. I sold 60 homes my second year and built a team that sold 100 homes a year off just the internet leads alone in conjunction with my 20 or so a year from sphere. So you don't need all seven. You just need to pick one or two and find which one fits your vibe the best. They all work, all of them work. It's which one do you want to work? So I hope that was helpful. If I can be of any help to your real estate business, don't be afraid to schedule a strategy session with me down below. We can show you what coaching we offer uh, and some cool programs we have. I hope that you got some clarity from this video here and I'll see you at the top.